the Dolbe plus the chemotherapy is show the uh, clinical benefit of the chemotherapy in the patient with the clothing high. Pancreatic cancer is uh, uh, one of the well-known tumor that express the clothing high. And the most common adverse event associated with the Dolbe schismus is nausea and vomiting and decrease of appetite. The pancreatic trial is still underway. We do want to bring highly differentiated drugs from an efficacy point of view. Now, ultimately, we want to bring drugs to patients that they can not just survive, but actually live. Uh, a life that is full and complete. We know about the preclinical aspects of the drug, but the clinic, the patients are going to teach us completely different things potentially. Hello everyone and welcome to Onco Daily, where we discuss 10 most promising cancer drugs not yet approved in 2024. And today we have an honor of discussing Zolbetuximab, one of the drugs listed in our list. And uh, our guests are Dr. Moit Free Chataraja Kishore, who is a Senior Vice President and Head of Human Oncology and Cell Therapy Development at Astellas Pharma. And also we have a privilege of welcoming also Tomoko Nakajima, who is an Executive Director and a set lead at Astellas Pharma. Welcome and thank you for accepting our invitation to be here today. Thank you very much for your interest in Zolbituximab and in Astellas's IO and cancer cell therapy portfolio. We are very happy to be here. So before we get started, can you uh, briefly introduce yourselves and your role at Astellas? Sure, I will do that. Um, my name is Moitri Chatterjee Kishore, as you mentioned. I head up immuno-oncology and cancer cell therapy development at Astellas. In this role, I'm responsible, my team is responsible for taking forward programs from candidate nomination all the way through its drug development continuum, so through life cycle management. Zolbituximab is the flagship asset for our IO portfolio. And uh, behind that, we have several promising assets, some of it in the clinic, some approaching the clinic. We're happy to talk about them as well. Hello, my name is Tomoko Nakajima. I am the asset lead for the Vizkishmap. So I have a plenty of experience to learn the clinical trial and, and get the approval of anti-cancer drugs uh, more than three years. So I joined the Astros about six months ago. I'm so excited to work as an asset leader for the Vizkishmap. That is a really interesting drug. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind introduction. This is just coming to our drug. Could you just briefly explain what is albeduximab, how it works, what are his main indications? Tomoko, you want to take that? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, very much for your question. So Zolbetuximab is the other first clothing 18.2 targeted therapies. And clothing 18.2 is the tight uh, junction protein that's normally expressed in the gastric mucosa cells. And then the, uh, so uh, clothing 18.2 uh, has a responsibility to regulate the permeability or cell polarity uh, in order to have a, a cell structure. So during the uh, malignant transformation, the cell structures or disruption of the uh, uh, cell polarity was happening. So therefore, clothing 18.2 more exposed to the antibody, more access to the antibody like Zolbetuximab. And then Zolbetuximab is able to bind to the clothing 18.2 and able to uh, mediate ADCC and CTC activity. This is the basics of the uh, mode of action for Zolbetuximab. Thank you for explaining how it works and how it is important in uh, treatment of uh, as a novel agent. And uh, can you share some data on latest trials, which were uh, results from the uh, recent advances in uh, treating with solbetoximab? Thank you uh, very much for your question. Um, so we conducted large global phase two, phase three trial, so called spotlight and growth. And those studies demonstrated Zolibetuximab plus chemotherapy uh, showed a clinically significant and a statistically significant overall survival benefit over chemotherapy alone. So those studies showed a consistent result. And then that, uh, we are also able to uh, show the reduction of the risk of death by approximately 25%. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, most recently, uh, the 2024 ASCO, uh, we updated the OS data as a final OS data from Spotlight. And we are able to confirm that Dolbeck-Kismal and chemotherapy continued to show the, uh, the clinical benefit and statistically significant benefit of overall survival. So this is exciting news for the patients. Yes, that's very promising and encouraging and congratulations on your ASCOS presentations. So uh, you say that it is usually used in combination with chemotherapy. And uh, what are the main indications? Are you testing it in different indications in different tumors? Uh, whoever expresses this clodon, or are there specific indications that you are testing the specific? Yeah, so we are interested in the uh, specific uh, the tumor that expresses the clodon high. In the gastric cancer studies, uh, that we are able to demonstrate the Dolbe plus the chemotherapy show the uh, clinical benefit of the chemotherapy in the patient with the clodon high. So clotting high is defined more than 75% of the tumor cell expressed modulate to strong uh, ISC staining. So therefore, we think that the dolbeck would be effective to those populations that is defined as the clotting high expressor. So pancreatic cancer is uh, uh, one of the well-known tumor that express the clotting high. So therefore, uh, Asteras is conducting the global phase two trial in the setting in combination with chemotherapy in the pancreatic cancer first line. So we hope that the similar result will be obtained. Yeah. So which indication do you think will get approval for Zolbetuximab first? So it will be gastric cancer? Yeah, of course. Well, actually, gastric cancers, it's already approved in Japan. So yeah. we had our first approval in Japan in March this year. And uh, we hope for the same. As Tomoko mentioned, the pancreatic trial is still underway. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, I was going to touch this question, but as we have uh, spoken about it, so in which phase of FDA approval is it? Uh, congratulations on being approved already in Japan. Hopefully, it will expand across the globe. So can you share when to wait the results or in which phase are you? Yes, uh, as you know, we did receive a complete response letter in January, and since then we have been wor working very diligently with the health authority. We were able to resubmit the BLA in May, and we have received a new PDUFA date, which is November 9th uh, in the US. And we continue to work also with authorities across the world, especially with the European authorities, um, to complete uh, the reviews in um, that region of the world as well. And the submission to China is also has been completed last year, and we expect a uh, final opinion early next year. Oh, so up in next year, we are going to expand the Zalbatoximas approval across the globe. Fingers crossed for the results. Hopefully by the next time we are getting follow-up, we'll see already an approved drug that will move from 10 was promising not approved one to the approved one. And um, coming back, and as we discussed, that there is a good efficacy data and it's showing promising results. And what about safety profile? Was it well tolerated? Does it have specific or special side effects which are difficult to manage? Or can you just a little bit explain on it? Yeah, Don't go ahead. yeah thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your question again. Yeah, and the most common adverse event associated with the Zorbeskishmab is nausea and vomiting and decrease of appetite. These are the uh, main, uh, the, the most frequent adverse events uh, when patients receive Zorbeskishmab. And nausea vomiting is the, uh, the, the one of the, uh, the side effects we expected uh, from the mode of action. Yes. Uh, thank you for sharing. So you say it's manageable, it's somewhat expected side effects. And uh, for this efficacy data, I think we can tell this uh, also. So coming back to drug development in the earlier phases, when Zolbidoxma was just being in preclinical phase, were you expecting to have this kind of great results? What motivates you to believe in the drug and uh, how it feels now when you are seeing the results? Can you share us behind the scenes uh, some insights? Thank you for asking that question. Um, you know, it really speaks to Estella's spirit of innovation. And as you know, Estella's has invested and has developed a strong portfolio in oncology for some time now. 
and has brought very key modalities in prostate cancer with Xtandi, in urothelial cancer with Padsev, and now in gastric cancer with Zolpidoxumab. And this is really based on the just the spirit of Estellas in understanding early data and taking calculated risks in investing in you know, significant studies to test the hypothesis. And that's exactly what happened with uh, Zolpituximab. Zolpituximab, which is also has been known as IMAB-362 or Claudoximab, was originally developed by a company called Ganymed Pharmaceuticals. And in late 2016, when Ganymed had first published some of the very early data um, where they were looking at monotherapy and then initially combination therapy in a small cohort of patients, Estellas was very interested in the data and took on the responsibility of taking forward Zolpituximab development and completed the acquisition of Zol uh, Ganymed in 2016. And from then on, I think if you think about the uh, development continuum, it's usually been some of these agents have been developed in later lines and then progressed to frontline. It is both the innovation spirit in Ganymed as well as in Estellas that we went directly into frontline because it was quite clear from the data that these are the patients who are most likely to respond um, to an agent such as azobituximab. But it was a pretty big risk going straight into frontline, but we did proceed to do that. And as Tomoko pointed out, we ran two large uh, phase three studies. And now we are seeing the data bear out and the interesting thing is the data continues to show OS, differential OS between uh, the control arm and the treatment arm, even as we are almost 40 months out. And that is pretty significant. And it means a lot for the patients who are cloud 18.2 positive and who may be eligible for this drug, hopefully in the future. Yes, thank you for sharing the history of Zolbatuximab. So you saw this success earlier, you felt that it could be and took the risk. And now we are having uh, all these good results. There is, There should be someone who is taking the risk and believing in the success of the drug to drive this innovation and to be here. And indeed, yes, you were right. From a lot of new novel drugs, they are starting from advanced stage and then apparently bringing to frontline. But here you are already having good results in the frontline. I think this is uh, speaking of the success. And I think that's why our editorial team, uh, it was uh, straightforward that we are having Zolbatuxin in our 10 list. And uh, for this one, in the pipeline of Astellas, what do you think could be the next drug who will be in our 2025 list of the drugs who are not yet approved but are pending approval? Do you have any suggestions? Well, we have a large pipeline, as I said, both in immuno-oncology and cancer cell therapy, as well as in our targeted protein degradation group that is also targeting various indications in oncology. Um, I don't know about 2025, but pretty soon we have uh, a lot of uh, assets that are progressing well through the clinic. One of the ones that I would like to highlight is our second generation cloud 18.2 targeted asset, which is ASP2138, which is a cloud 18.2 T cell engager. It's a CD3 bispecific. And that is really moving very close to proof of concept. Uh, right now, the POC enabling studies are ongoing. And in the near future, we will hopefully be able to progress that into full development. Thank you for your recommendation. We'll go through it and hopefully we'll get into our list. And do you anticipate any new data in upcoming conferences? Where will we will be waiting for the new results? Yes, and um, another one of our early state assets, ASP1570, which is a DG GK Zeta inhibitor, we will be uh, discussing some of the early stage clinical data at ESMO this year. And then obviously for Zolbituximab itself, the pancreatic data readout is, is imminent in the next few months. And so we look uh, forward to, to having that data in hand so that we can plan for publications. And then obviously for ASP2138, as we progress towards proof of concept, um, I hope that you'll see some publications demonstrating um, the data that we are now collecting. A lot of novel things coming in the future. We'll keep our fingers closed because essentially they are going to benefit our patients. And this, uh, yeah. this field is moving so fast and so we're happy to see advances so rapidly. And just a little bit different format for a few uh, quick questions. 
what are three most important qualities that a new drug needs to get to the market? Well, the most important thing, and Estellas always has that in mind, are patients inside. What do the patients need? Where is the unmet need? And definitely efficacy is really, really critical. We don't want to bring drugs that, you know, are just um, a slight improvement, perhaps. We do want to bring highly differentiated drugs from an efficacy point of view. But tolerability is also pretty critical. As Tomoko discussed, in the early phases of development of zopatuximab, we did see nausea and vomiting, and we developed strategies, both from a mitigation point of view, advising physicians on how to manage nausea and vomiting. Um, and that led to you know, patients remaining on studies and the trials progressing faster. Now, ultimately, we want to bring drugs to patients that they can not just survive, but actually live uh, a life that is full and complete. So efficacy and safety are really critical. The third really important piece for us is ease of use. Uh, how do we get geographic access for these patients? It's great to develop a drug that's accessible in the Western Hemisphere and maybe some countries uh, across the world, but we want to develop drugs that are easily accessible across the world to patients everywhere. And one of the most important parts of Zolbituximab and drugs like Zolbituximab that are targeted to a certain patient population is that we have also developed an assay that goes with it. And uh, that detection assay to understand who is that patient who may benefit from zolbituximab has to be available at the same time um, to patients all over the world. So I think those are the three, obviously efficacy, tolerability profile, and ease of use, and access to patients, um, without which it's not, all of this that we do is not important. Thank you for highlighting this most important thing, which is not in my list, but I was going to ask because these novel drugs are usually in the developing countries, developed countries highly, and uh, while vast majority of our population is not living there. So access to the drugs is something very important and very happy to hear that uh, you are trying to address this question and make it available for more people. And I see a lot of uh, different countries are getting approval. So you do want to have the drug over there too. That's very important. Thank you for highlighting it. And actually in one of your interviews, you mentioned that drug development teaches humility and respect toward living beings. Can you share as a little more? It's a very different angle of looking at drug development. I think there is there are two parts of this. There is obviously the respect, as I said, to patients. Um, those of us who have been in drug development for 20 plus years have seen everything from the development of chemotherapy drugs to precision medicine to immunotherapy. Um, but always, as I said, you keep the patient in the center of it. What is the what is it that the patient needs? What situation is the patient in? You know, is the patient hospitalized? Or is the patient really uh, somebody who can come in to get the drug at the physician's office? Or would it be better to have a more accessible approach from a dose administration point of view? So that, that respect, that understanding is critical. The other part, I don't know if you've seen that in other places where I've spoken, is humility. It's really, really critical because... Again, for zolbituximab, if you think back that early data, yes, we did take that risk. But you know, in every drug, we have to have the humility because we, when we take molecules into clinical development, we don't understand the whole thing. Particularly in IO, some of the preclinical models cannot really project things like overall survival. And so you do take a risk as you go into the clinic and having that humility to understand that yes, we know about the preclinical aspects of the drug, but the clinic, the patients are going to teach us completely different things potentially. And having that respect, understanding what are the patients are saying, we include PRO um, outcomes into our phase one trial so that we can understand what the patient's response is. What are they feeling? How important is nausea and vomiting to them? You know, is it just an a in the AE profile? What impact does it have on their lives? That is all critical for us in our drug development.
Oh, thank you for giving us another overview of drug development. And uh, we can hear a lot about OS data, PFS data, or maybe patient rewarded outcome, but how drug developers look at it is not usually the C. So thank you for sharing. Yes, eventually our patients are the ones who are going to experience. And if you are a patient, how long would you like to have this nausea or how important is it to you? So if we have this in our mind, our um, drug development will work uh, better. Yes, and thank you for sharing your perspective. It was uh, very inspirational. And um, do you have any uh, other things that you would uh, recommend or advise to young people who would like to work in drug development? What would be your one general advice? We can well, I will let Tomoko speak as well on this topic, but you know, I think pharmaceutical development is such an exciting field to be in. Um, when I completed my graduate education, I went into academics like many of us do, got that experience. But then having the ability to impact the lives of thousands of patients, sometimes hundreds of thousands of patients across the world it is is really significant. And um, the hard work the, the teams in pharmaceutical development put in day after day to take something that, you know, once when, it, when a drug is getting into the clinic, it's really not a drug. You really understand it's a drug during early clinical development and taking those small calculated risks. It all, when you look back, as we are now looking at Zolpituxima backwards, it is so, um, so fulfilling and I, I would highly recommend uh, you know people who want to take their research whether it's in medicine whether it's in chemistry or biologics or discovery and they want to impact a lot of patients a lot of people across the world pharmaceuticals is a wonderful place to do that thank Tomorrow, you if you have any thank insights yeah, uh, thank you uh, very much uh, for giving me, me this opportunity to speak up. Yeah, I would like to mention that one thing. So we work as a team to bring the innovative product to the patients. Sometimes we hit the wall. But everyone always try to help each other because we are seeing the same goal. How we are able to quickly deliver the innovative product to the patients, even though the one person hit the wall even though the other members are not expert to that area, but always they try to help us. And finally, we are able to have a really innovative ideas that we, we haven't think about. So this is a great opportunity, not only uh, that to work as a, one of the researchers who are engaged in the anti-cancer therapy. So from their heart, they would like to secure a patient. But the more interesting and then attractive one is as a team. Also, we are able to uh, work together, uh, including the ACERAS member and the other healthcare the professional or patients. We try to work together as a team to bring move forward. This is more attractive point uh, for me to work in the, uh, the pharmaceutical industry. Thank you for your insights. And we started speaking about drug development and ended up with inspiring and some motivation. It was very interesting and captivating interview. Thank you for being with us today. It was very interesting. And we wish Albatuxima with the Stella's continuous success, hopefully on our follow-up meetings or wherever we meet in the future, we are going to see the most, the better and more promising results and with approvals uh, across the globe. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, it was our pleasure to host you. And uh, stay tuned for our updates on uh, Oncodaily's 10 most promising cancer drugs. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Oncodaily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.